sitting there watching some of the news the past couple of weeks or so. I see we're building our, our lower fence and gates and all around the, the southern borders. We're getting them higher and we're shipping, uh, you know, different soldiers down through there, getting everybody all stacked up and lined up. Then you hear about all the, the nerve gas, the nerve agents and all that's going off around the world. And, and you know, you see the, the pictures of them having to try to wash off all these babies and kids and all this stuff is just, tor man, this world has gone, well, no, it's been crazy. This world has been mad. But it's just, you know, it's just having another little spew up like a volcano, and it's just going again everywhere. There's, a, as we said, the wars, the rumors of the wars, and all the other stuff that's going on. Uh, we look at uh, what's Syria saying, you know, here we are telling us we're going to come over there to Syria, and Russia's like, yeah, you come on, and we're going to come back at you, and of course China's going to chime in, and, you know, <clears throat> everybody, everybody over there just wants to be part of the game. Everybody now thinking they the... A big boy on the block or whatever. Nobody wants to be left out. And I'm sitting there thinking, when it comes to nuclear war, y'all don't leave me out. I really don't want no part of it, you know. <laughs> I don't want to uh, get all new new uh, meaning to that old saying, turn and burn, you know, try to turn and run. And next thing you know, you're you're disintegrated. You know, I, I, that's not what I'm looking forward to in life. But that's what we see going on. And that's what we know, according to God's word, that we can look forward to happening the closer and closer that we get to the end times. <clears throat> and it can put stress on you if you allow it to. Everything in your life that you go through, if you allow the stress to build up, it's going to build it and, and you are going to have the internal wars within yourself. Every situation that you're going through, uh, you can be saddened, you can be, you can get mad. Everything that you can think of because of what you see in this world and what you've got going on in your own life, in your own part of it, can cause so much stress and chaos that you just wonder, well, how, what am I going to do? You know, you just leave yourself all, you ever feel just all tense up, like, how can I get out of this? And you just want to, you just want to explode, so it feels like you're going to explode, you know, and it just... Everything just starts to get to where the slightest little thing bugs you. You know, you don't you even fuss at the squirrel that runs out in front of you. And you know he's going to run out and cut five different ways. But you just sit there and you holler at him, you know, you're a stupid thing. You know, and he's like, you know, whatever. You know he's going to do it. But, but we just, we get so built up. We've got to learn to see what's going on in the world. Recognize what's going on in the world. And know what's coming according to God's word. We also need to take that, bring it on back down to us, see what's going on in our life, recognize what's going on in our life, and go to God and realize this is what God says, and this is how we're going to be able to overcome it. <clears throat> this morning, if we're going to overcome the different things in our life, and like I've always said, number one, you better stay stayed up, prayed up, read up, and ready to go if Jesus was to step through that cloud, that trumpet was to sound, you better be ready to go. Now, if you've got that spot in your life where you are ready to go, where you are set up and you're sitting there saying, God, I am ready, it's time, then pretty much you're being able to handle that stress. But if you ever get to where you can't, just remember to praise God. That's all you got to do. It's when it, you feel like your little pressure cap, my, <clears throat> we used to... My grandmother used to use them a lot, and then my dad would use it, you know, once he went hunting, if he, you know, killed some game or whatever, we, he'd use it to make sure we got all the meat. But my grandmother used to use a pressure cooker a lot, and that little bottle of little pressure cap, he said, and it was just going off and on. You know, sometimes those little pressure relief valves, sometimes we need to just take them off and just give a good shout out. You ever hear one of them that just comes off? Sometimes we need to just give a shout out into God and let that praise flow and watch the release come your way. In Deuteronomy, <clears throat> the Bible tells us this. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God. He hath done for thee these great and terrible things, and thy eyes and thy eyes have seen it. Do you know how come the world is in the shape it's in? We all know that here we are, we're living in these days, of, and the end time has been told, and we say, oh, <clears throat> Satan's on a rampage. People like to pull the old Flip Wilson. Well, why are you doing that? Well, the devil made me do it. You know, people like to, to give the devil the praise and the credit for it. 
But the problem is not that the devil is running loose. He's been running loose for years and years. The problem is that people has quit fearing God. People have quit realizing who God is. People have quit giving God the credit and the praise. And people are no, you, you used to could say, you know, before you come in the sanctuary, any man that you saw, boy, that hat would be off. You know, you ladies can wear y'all's hat, but boy, that hat would be off. You know, ain't no way you'll come in that sanctuary with anything, you know, or, or even on the church property. You'd look around, people wouldn't get on the property if they weren't dressed what they thought would be appropriate to get on. Nowadays, people just come up to the church, bust out a window, come in and steal an offering plate. You got to be careful or they're going to come out to your back side of the property, steal all your air conditioning units. You know, just like how this right before Christmas, we had somebody come up and try to break into the church because, you know, I believe it's because we had all those, they were fake presents, but they were all these boxes wrapped up out there that you could see in. Somebody probably thought, boy, I'm going to have me a Christmas, you know. If they would have got in, they'd been like, nothing was there. They'd probably come back and burned it down, you know, because because they did all that for nothing. But people will try to break in. How dare people don't fear God anymore. It's like Satan has got them <clears throat> so Blinded and so fooled <clears throat> that they don't even fear him for what he can and what he will <clears throat> and what he would, couldn't do. Folks, we better wake up and realize within ourselves, don't ever, <clears throat> don't ever, ever forget who our God is. Don't ever forget what this Bible says. You know, used to when they would go into the, the holies of holies, the priests would have to tie a, a rope around their leg that had a bell. And when they would go in there, as long as they was in there doing what they're supposed to do, people could hear that bell going and they could know that it was okay. But if they went in that spot and they didn't have where they were, their walk wasn't with God, where it was supposed to be, if they were in there playing church instead of having church, then that old bell would stop tinkling and they would drag the dead body out. Folks, you better fear God and who he is. You better fear God and what he is. And you better fear God and keep that relationship with him as close as it can be. Why? Because he is thy praise. He is thy God. He has brought thee. He has delivered you. He has brought you from your past and shown you to your future. He is living or allowing you to live in your present where you are. And he keeps you safe. He is your provider. He is the one that's daily taking care. He has got you set up. If you will just trust and believe in him. What does the psalmist say? So will I sing praise unto thy name forever. That I may daily perform my vows. When you get up in the morning. Give God a shout of praise. It helps cover up the cracking of the bones, if you're in my case, because when you get up and you start, oh, and you start walking, you know, sitting there thinking, Lord, everybody in the world you probably hear my, my knees cracking, my ankles cracking, and my back knee moaning, you know. <clears throat> but the whole time, what? Oh, thank you, God, for letting me get up and be able to whew, go get it again today, you know. Praise God through your day. When your day gets bad and it seems like everything starts falling, praise Him anyway. You want to be able to get through your day? The psalmist says the key is is to give him praise, listen, that I may daily perform my vows, my duties, what I've told God I was going to do, my relationship. If I will give him the praise, oh, it makes it so much easier to be able to do what I'm supposed to do. <clears throat> the psalmist says, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Y'all know what? Okay, what do reins do? They help you steer that horse, right? They help you guide that horse wherever wherever you want that horse to go. You, you grab it by the reins and that horse wants to go this way. You turn it this way, right? You can guide and steer. Let God have your reins. And if he has your reins, you walk where he wants you to go. You, you go exactly where you trot, you gallop, you run. You do whatever as long as God has got the reins. That old bumper sticker I told y'all. I used to think it was cool, then one day it hit me. It said something about, <clears throat> God is my co-pilot. Well, then you in the wrong seat. You better let God be your pilot. Let him have control of where you're going. You just hang on and go where he tells you to. Hang on for the ride and do what you're supposed to. It says he's got your reins, and it says he covered me 
in my mother's womb. I will praise thee for I fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works that my soul knoweth right well. Jeremiah 1 and 5 <clears throat> says, Before thou formed me in my mother's womb, thou knew who I was. God knows each one of us. He created us. You don't have to worry about going to myancestry.com to figure out who you are, what part you are. Just know that you are a child of God. Don't worry about what race you might have come from or what, whatever state, a part of this world. God will fill you in on that one day when you get up there. Just know that right now you're walking heavenly covered. God's known you from your womb. He's, he's, he's provided for you and brought you up. So walk like you are a child of Jesus. Walk like you come a lineage of his family and know who you are. That's what the Bible tells us to do. It says you know me. And we're to have fellowship. We are to worship. Psalms 41 through 4. The psalmist, or 1 through 3. The psalmist says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, and many shall see it, and fear, and trust in the Lord. What is that song? You took my feet from the miry clay, placed them on the rock to stand. I just can't praise them enough. You know, that's what we got to go through, folks. We might have been walking through this life, and we done picked up some mud. Y'all ever seen that? It's an old crazy movie. Uh, I think it's called My Cousin Vinny. And I saw, you know, I've seen it many times. And anyways, he gets out of his thoughts, and he goes to court. And he says, Judge, you know I ain't got a good suit? Because I ended up getting, getting stuck in y'all's mud. And I couldn't get the mud off my suit. So I had to go get this other suit. It ended up being like a clown suit looking thing. And they said, y'all know about this mud. The mud is everywhere. Everywhere you go around here is mud, mud, mud. Folks, when we're walking in this world, we're walking in this world. This world is full of mud. That miry clay, that sticky stuff isn't where it ever. You know, y'all ever had the mud stick to you? They call it the miry clay. It gets on your shoes, and you so you do this right here. You watch how to walk through the grass, boy. You try to try to wipe it off. It don't come off until you go in your house. It'll come off all over your house, but it won't come off of your shoes. It won't come off of your pants. It don't come off of nothing except where it's not supposed to. You get it? Well, I remember one time. Me and my cousins was riding motorcycles through this area, and we come through this little spot, and boom, man, that motorcycle stuck and just stood, and we couldn't get it out. We had to wait till our dads got home. We had to hook up chains just to pull that thing out because it went in that mud and it just suctioned in. Couldn't get that motorcycle to move for nothing. This old world, <clears throat> as you go walking, boy, sometimes we get the world on our feet, you know. And we're like, oh, got to get it off. We'll try to drag it. But what happens? Ah, it'll be okay. I'll just leave it on there. It's going to be okay. You know, we go a little bit further. Next thing you know, we got more mud built up. And if we ain't careful, we're going to be suctioned in and we're going to be stuck. How in the world are we ever going to, you ever got stuck in the mud? I tell you what, I stepped in it before and got stuck. Then I try to pull your leg out. You end up losing a shoe. Then you have to go back in and pull that shoe out. This world wants to suck your shoes off. I tell you that much. It wants to get you so buried. It wants to drag you in. It wants to hold you to it. But the psalmist says, Lord, you took my feet from the miry clay. We had to wait to our dads to get home to get us that motorcycle out. Oh, you I have to wait. You might not can get it on your own. But your heavenly father, when he comes back and he comes back around to you and you call out and you say, God, I'm stuck in this mud. Lord, I need your help. The Bible says he reached down and pulled you from that miry clay. He was able to grab a hold. He was strong enough to break the suction, to break the bond and the chains that this world has got. He's strong enough to pull you out. <clears throat> you can't do it by yourself. All you're going to do is get more and more muddy. All you're going to do is get deeper and deeper. <clears throat> but if you will allow God 
to pull you out. He is the one that's there. He is the one that's, that's going to be able to bring you up. And that's what the psalmist was saying. Lord, I praise you because you brought me out of that pit. You brought me out of, <clears throat> out of that miry clay. And you set my feet upon the rock. You set my feet where I can one more time have a good foundation, where I can stand, where I can walk and not slip or not fall. God, you're the one that's got to set me there. I can't do it on my own, but God, when you do, Lord, I want to praise you for it. When you think about where God has brought you from, through every sticky situation, through everything that you were sucked into, for everything that the chains that bound you, and you can remember how God was able to pull you out when you couldn't do it. Folks, you need to praise Him. And not just in the bad times, but in the good times. Think about it and praise Him for what He's done. Praise Him for what you know. If He's done it once, if you happen to slip and fall, Lord of mercy, He can do it again. He's there for you. He loves you. And he wants to be sure that you stay on the side that you're supposed to do. <clears throat> the psalmist says, Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land <clears throat> where no water <clears throat> is. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy love and kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. <coughs> in a world, <coughs> excuse me, in the world that we're in right now, in the darkness, in everything that's going on, and everything that's happening. With this world and with us, <clears throat> we are in a dry and a dusty, a dry and a thirsty land. You know what happens when you get out there and you've been working in the sun all day or you've been outside and it's hot and it's dry. <clears throat> Boy, the first thing that you want is when can I get a break? When can I get something cool to drink? When can I let that water just start to touch my lips? Have you ever been so hot? <clears throat> That when you made it to the water, you didn't even really want to swallow it. You just wanted to put it in your mouth and just hold it. You're just hoping it's just going just gonna to soak in. But your lips just couldn't wait to feel how it was going to feel the relief. Oh, that's what God is for us. In this world that's dry, in this world that's burning, in this world that's dusty, folks, it's got nothing that can quench our thirst. There is nothing that it can offer. There is nothing that it has as we are going through the fires that we face daily that can quench what we need. Oh, they say the Gatorade, I think, is what they say is the thirst quencher. Let me tell you, Jesus, just like he said the woman at the will, he said, let me tell you, out of me flows the river of life. If you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. The world has got nothing that they can offer you that's going to quench the thirst that you need for your life. Oh, but if you will reach out to God, if you will believe that in Him flows the river of life, flows the waters that's going to, it's going to touch our lips. It's going to be that anointing. It's going to be what we need to make it through. It's going to bring us through and over the dry spell. It's going to quench our thirst. It's going to be the, <clears throat> the strength that our body needs to make it in this world. Folks, you ain't got to worry about making sure that you got a canteen. You ain't got to make sure that you got jugs packed up just in case the water goes off or the power goes out. If you're plugged into Jesus, it doesn't matter how dry everything else gets. His spirit will flow to you. It will quench you. It will wash you. It will keep you alive. You will be able to grow where nothing else can grow in this world because the blessings of God will be flowing as he is that water of life. <clears throat> we have got to realize and praise him for who he is. Not only because he made us, I like this part. Not only because he made us, but also <clears throat> because he cares for us and because he's got our back. I'll just tell you, I like somebody that's got my back. Colton was telling me the other day, if y'all are into MMA, Conor McGregor, evidently he had a buddy in New York City, got beat up. They would say, oh, you're part of the Conor McGregor clan. Oh, yeah, whatever. So they beat him up. 
Conor McGregor's pretty much a bad dude. Bad in a good way, you know. And so his buddy calls over to Ireland, and they, they beat me up. He's on a jet plane, flies over here. Man, next thing you know, he's taking names and just, he's, everybody did his buddy wrong. Well, he's just reobliging them, you know. And so that's the big thing. Everybody, everybody's on Conor McGregor watch in New York, you know. And he's got his back. He took care of his friends. Folks, that's the way God is about us. He's got your back. He's going to take care of you if somebody wants to go messing with you. In the book of 2 Chronicles, here we got the king of Judah. We got the king of Israel. Oh, we're out in war and we're all, there's a big war going. And the king of Israel says, hey, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to disguise myself. I'm not going to go out there as the king. I'm going to disguise myself because, you know, everybody's, everybody's out there. And I'm going to go on out and I'm going to charge in. And I'm going to attack and, and we're going to get this war going. And, and so he goes out to attack and, and sure enough, they, they, they start, all the chariots start to come in on him and they realize, hey, wait a minute, that's not, that's not the king of Israel. And they pull off the attack. The chariots start going the other way. And it says, but one bowman raises back and shoots an arrow. Don't tell me it is a God thing, though, now. One bowman, I tell everybody else, pulls off and the one arrow finds its way right into the spot of the armor where it does not protect him. So they take him and they set him up and the Bible says that by evening he is killed. Or he dies. Second Chronicles chapter 20. King Jehoshaphat, he's sitting there saying, Great, now the king of Israel's dead. Here I am, the king of Judah. It's time for me to go out tight. Lord, we're never going to make it through this. The enemy is outnumbering us on every side. Man, they've got more firepower. They've got these chariots. They've got everything, God. What am I going to do? And it says, he says, Hearken unto all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thou, King Jehoshaphat, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it is God's. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle, but set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And they rose early in the morning, they went forth in the wilderness of, of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. <clears throat> and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, or and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which they were come up against Judah, and they were smitten. Here's, here's Jehoshaphat. Lord, what are we going to do? We're facing an army that's, that's so much greater. What are we going to do? He said, I want you to go out and I want you to fight anyway. He said, I want you to go out and I want you to get on your horses. I want you to get your soldiers and I want you to go out. He said, but I also want you to set up me some singers. To set up some that's going to praise me to go first. And as they start going out and as they start singing and as they start praising don't worry about the battle. Don't worry about the enemy. I'll take care of that. So they set them up, and the Bible says that as they went to go in, but you got to notice, they still had to go out. They still had to go to war. They still had to fight. But they were armed with the knowledge and the word of God saying, just praise your way through it. And the Bible says that as they went, the old people would, would turn against them own selves, not knowing whom they were shooting. And it says as they went and as they marched, everybody just seemed to more or less kill them own selves or kill themselves among, them, among themselves. They went all the way to the camp. When you keep reading, they was able to take all the spoils, everything that was there. All the Bible says that they found were dead soldiers and spoils ready for them to take because they were willing to praise God through every situation in their life. They were willing to march on and praise. Oh, let's go to, to Joshua, how he comes up to the great walled city of Jericho. And God said, just march around. And then he says, on that last time, 
on that last day, I don't want you to say nothing, but I want you to march around that city and encompass it. And then what did he say, dude? He said, I want you to give a shout out of praise. And as they gave the shout of praise, the Bible says that the walls began to tremble and the walls began to shake and the walls fell down and they were able to win the battle. It doesn't matter what is going on in your life. It doesn't matter if the battle is raging. Praise God anyways. He's got your back. He's got the front. He knows you. All you got to do is keep marching and keep going. Oh, your Christian faith might be under under attack also. You might be going through stuff where everybody's just wondering, oh, are you still there? Do you still got it? Or, or we just don't believe that way. Well, look at Paul and Silas thrown into the middle of the jail at the midnight hour. What did they do? Did they give up? Did they try to start a riot? No. All they tried to do was to sing and to praise God. Folks, you want to get out of the situation you're in? Just start praising God. You want to get out and be able to conquer and get on? Just start praising God. The Bible says that He is uh, he inhabits, well, the Bible says he inhabits our praise, but according to the first scripture I read you, it says the Lord God is our praise. He is who we shout. He is who we call upon. The praise we lift up to him. <clears throat> so, uh, Ephesians says this, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and in the Father and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians says, In everything give thanks, for he is the will, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, you need to give them thanks. You need to give them praise, and you're going to make it through. Don't worry about what the world says. Praise him anyway. Sitting in traffic. Instead of sitting there beating and banging on your steering wheel or wondering what you're going to do, just start praising God. You know that crazy commercial? I think it was a, a Kia commercial. The old guy's sitting there just to singing a song, and everybody's just looking at him, you know. And he pulls up. Finally, this other woman in another Kia, you know, she pulls up, and they start singing the song as a duet, and they drive off. You start sitting there in traffic. You start getting... Don't worry about road rage. Let's go with some road praise. Let's sit there and start praising and worshiping God. See if the traffic don't start to dispense. Or even if it don't, see if the mood around you don't change. See if your mood don't change. When you start praising God, something is going to happen. Something is going to change. It might be within you. It might be in those around you. The armies of Satan may end up attacking themselves. You might end up just changing within yourself and changing what's going on. But something is going to happen when you start to praise and you start to worship God. Plain and simple. Because God loves it when we praise Him. And God starts to move. God starts to, to walk with us. Come on to the piano. Psalms tells us this. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto God, the God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him alone doth great wonders, for His mercy endureth forever. Then the psalmist says in 117, Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise Him, all you people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. That second verse in Deuteronomy. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Thou shalt serve him. To him shalt thy cleave. Verse 21, for he is thy praise. He is thy praise. He is your praise. Like one of the Gospels. What's the Gospel? It's the message of the good news. What is our praise? Our praise is God. That's who we praise. That's who we worship. He is our praise. There's nothing else. There's nothing else to praise. We need to sing His praises. We need to talk of His praises. To tell of His praises. We need to live and walk in His praises. The psalmist tells us, you'll make it through the day. Praise Him. Praise Him. With everything you're going through in the day. Praise Him. For whatever you're facing, for whatever, whatever, you know, fire is raging around you. Praise 
God. Just praise Him. You might be in the fire yourself. Praise Him anyways. You might come out just like the, the three Hebrew children. Hey, you don't smell like smoke. Hey, I, I was crazy. You ain't got to worry about it. Everything was good. It was hot. But I made it through. Praise Him, God. He is our praise. Stand to your feet, please.